Hey guys, I hope your week is going well. In today's video, I'm gonna give you some dermatologist approved tips and tricks for managing your child's diaper rash. If you're a parent or the caregiver of a young child, there is a good chance you have had to cope with a diaper rash. They're not fun for either you or for baby. Diaper rash reflects the fact that the skin under the diaper area is unable to function optimally as a barrier and therefore breaks down, the skin there breaks down and becomes susceptible to colonization by candida yeast. Candida yeast is part of our natural uh, gut flora and part of our natural GI tract flora and comes out in that area and because the skin barrier is impaired for reasons I'll explain, uh, can colonize the skin in that area and just really set, set your baby's skin up for a lot of problems and a really vicious, often painful, uncomfortable rash. What causes diaper dermatitis? A variety of external factors are responsible. First of all, number one factor is going to be moisture or dampness. That area, as you, as you probably have already figured out, is hard to keep dry. Underneath the diaper, the baby will sweat, Maybe there's some wetness or water left behind on the skin before you put the diaper on. Water and moisture on the skin under the diaper start to break down the skin barrier uh, in that area and begin to set the stage for diaper rash forming. The second factor is going to be pee and poop. Uh, and when left on the skin, it can begin to dissolve some of the skin barrier. Specifically, the bacteria in poop make certain enzymes that further raise the pH in that area. Certain bacteria produce something called urease, which is an enzyme that can further raise the pH and compromise the skin. And actually, babies who are fed cow milk-based formulas have a slightly higher risk of developing diaper rash because those formulas contain a higher burden of these urease producing bacteria. The third external factor that contributes to diaper rash is going to be simply friction, uh, whether it be skin on skin contact or the friction of the diaper uh, rubbing against the child's skin. You'll notice in particular that diaper rash is more prominent on areas of the skin in the diaper area where you have skin on skin contact, like the folds around the inner thighs and the folds within the genitalia. And babies have a lot more folds and rolls and so they are even more predisposed to, to diaper dermatitis because of, because of merely friction. Moisture settles into those spaces. Moist, moist skin that is under, under occlusion and under friction is, is really just kind of sanding away of the skin barrier, making it susceptible to invasion with candida albicans yeast, as well as just breakdown and culminating in, in diaper rash. How absorbent the diaper is, if the diaper fits well, uh, if it doesn't fit properly and there's a lot more friction, that's obviously gonna be an external factor. Uh, and then the last external factor that I'll mention is going to be everything else that you put on your child's skin in that area. Soaps, cleansers, lotions, creams, wipes, you name it, these things all can contain ingredients that can be irritating to baby skin or anyone's skin, but even more so on the skin of the diaper area that's already wet and macerated and just more sensitive. Also, ingredients in these products can be sensitizing, meaning your baby has a risk of developing an allergy potentially to some of these ingredients. And I'll touch on what those are towards the end of this video. Now, not all rashes under the diaper are going to be diaper rash. There are other skin conditions that can present in the diaper area. So with the assistance of your child's pediatrician, you will be able to, to know for sure uh, if this is just run of the mill diaper rash or something else. For example, psoriasis. You may be familiar with psoriasis. It's a common skin condition that presents as scaly patches on the arms and scalp often, but in babies, it can present in the diaper area and is instead of scaly, a little bit more moist and kind of just looks like diaper rash. Also, uh, a condition called seborrheic dermatitis can present in the diaper area. 
certain types of eczema can present in the diaper area and certain skin infections may be may be present there as well or complicating a pre-existing diaper rash so there you know every baby is going to be different and different things can also be be manifesting at the same time in that area so always check in with your child's pediatrician to make sure you have the right diagnosis and you're going down the right path before trying to address this yourself the first step, of course, is going to be to check in with your child's pediatrician, affirm the diagnosis, and make sure there aren't any specific prescription treatments that may be needed in your child's case, because there are multiple factors, as you have heard at this point, that contribute to diaper dermatitis. But for you, what you can go ahead and begin to do is to take a look at your diapering practices. What type of diaper are you using? Are you using a disposable diaper or are you using a cloth diaper? Both have advantages and disadvantages. Disposable diapers have the advantage over cloth diapers in that they are more absorbent and they will allow for uh, a drier a drier uh, environment. They wick up moisture much better than cloth diapers do. Um, however, they are they offer the disadvantage in that they are a you know hard on the environment. B, they often have dyes in them that can irritate the child's skin, and they often contain fragrance. Also, the adhesives and the rubbers and things in the elastic around the waistband of the and the elastic around the legs can actually be contributory as well. But uh, cloth diapers remove the risk of dyes and fragrance, uh, but they often are not sufficiently moisture wicking enough. And so it may be that if you're using cloth diapers, the bottom, the skin under the diaper is not, is not drying out enough. And you may, for a short time at least, need to switch to super absorbent diapers. The weather can make a huge difference <laughs> If it's hot out, your baby's gonna sweat and that just means more moisture under the diaper area. So you may notice this becoming more of a problem in the summertime. Um, also, are you overdressing your child? Uh, tight leggings uh, or tights, which are cute and popular, uh, they don't allow for the skin to breathe very well. And that may be, that may be putting your child at risk for persistent or worsening of their diaper dermatitis. So loose fitting clothing is a better choice. Um, and also ask yourself, has my child recently received oral antibiotics? Not uncommon, babies get uh, ear infections and they have to be on antibiotics and antibiotics can alter the uh, flora of our gut, the, the bacterial colonization of our gut transiently and make us more predisposed to candida yeast infections uh, on the skin. So that is a risk factor for diaper dermatitis, recent antibiotic use. Take a look at how the diaper fits your child. Make sure that there isn't any chafing or uh, rubbing, that it fits properly. Maybe you need to change brands or change to a different size. Maybe they've just outgrown a, their size. Also, pay attention to if there is any moisture that you are leaving behind on the skin there after you clean up baby before closing the diaper up. Moisture can be left behind from, say, the wet wipes, uh, so make sure you allow the skin to fully dry. Also, if you bathe the baby, uh, make sure they're fully dry before putting the diaper on. I realize that this can be quite a bit of choreography to orchestrate with a wiggly child, but those are some tips uh, and things that could be contributing. Specific ingredients though that can play a role in diaper dermatitis, and honestly this may not be the case for your child, it's not going to be every child's diaper dermatitis that is due to these ingredients, but they certainly can be contributory, and the longer your child's diaper dermatitis goes on, the more likely they are to develop problems with these particular ingredients. The first ingredient is going to be fragrance. Uh, those of you who watch any of my videos, you're like, oh my gosh, you cannot warn against fragrance enough. I'm always telling you guys to try and avoid it. Uh, baby skin is very susceptible to irritation from fragrance. Fragrance is very sensitizing. It makes it more likely that the skin will develop problems to other ingredients. Uh, and it really just has no role. There's no need for babies to be fragranced. Uh, so that, that can be tricky. Fragrance is in diapers, it's in wipes, it's in uh, 
creams, lotions, and you know, at the beginning of the diaper dermatitis, you may you may have the tendency to want to switch everything to what's marketed as all natural. But I caution you against doing that because a lot of times things that are labeled as all natural, the manufacturers of those products love to heap in fragrance and essential oils, and that can really set your baby up for a lot of problems. Uh, be cognizant of the fact that products labeled unscented and even fragrance free are not always a guarantee to be free, truly free of fragrance. It has to do with how, how, uh, how uh, cosmetics and personal care products, uh, how they get away with labeling things. For example, sometimes fragrance is added for other reasons to products and does not impart any detectable odor, and so they can label it as free of fragrance. Uh, so be really conscientious. I will list in the description box below the names that fragrance can commonly go by so that you are aware of that because it's not always going to be obvious. They have strange names like limonene and geranial and these weird kind of names that you may not be familiar with. So I'll put that in the description box as something to look for and avoid. Switching to a all fragrance-free products is recommended. Look, look at the ingredients carefully, make sure they are free of fragrance, but no scented lotions, body creams, washes, shampoos, diapers, wipes, all fragrance-free. Going fragrance-free is a really great step in the right direction. The next thing you want to make it a strong effort to avoid is going to be synthetic dyes. These can be very irritating to everyone's skin, but babies in particular. Um, synthetic dyes include uh, Dispersed Red 117, Dispersed Blue, and Dispersed Orange. These synthetic dyes are used uh, not only in the diapers, but also in fabrics, and they can leach into the skin, particularly when the skin barrier is impaired in a diaper dermatitis, and cause problems for the child. The other ingredient that can become a problem, but is not, off, not always the culprit, but is something just to be aware of, is an emulsifier that is in a lot of baby products called Sorbitan. Uh, I'll list that down below as well. Uh, might be harder to just outright avoid, but could be contributory. Then the other category of ingredients to be aware of uh, as potentially causative are going to be certain preservatives. Preservatives in particular you'll find in the baby wipes. The reason for this is that baby wipes are a water-based product and manufacturers have to make sure that that does not become contaminated with bacteria and mold. Uh, so they have to add preservatives to these products. And babies can subsequently, particularly in the setting of a diaper dermatitis, become sensitized and subsequently allergic to these preservatives. Common preservatives in wet wipes include bronopol, iodopropyl butyl carbamate, methyl isothiazinolone. I'll list these down below for you guys so you don't have to remember them. Uh, they're a mouthful and you know, I'll list them down below for you guys. The other thing though with a lot of the, um, a lot of the disposable diapers also will have uh, certain ingredients added to the elastic components and the rubber components that may be present that your child also can become sensitized to and subsequently allergic to. Um, so again, I'll put that down below in the description box. They have some exotic chemical names uh, that you know you just might have to look for. But honestly, I would say if you're gonna look to start avoiding ingredients and things, start with fragrance and dyes. Avoiding all of these ingredients is going to be nearly impossible and may not be relevant to your baby's diaper dermatitis. The most prudent thing would be to avoid fragrance and to avoid the red and blue and orange dyes, the dispersed dyes. As the parent or caregiver of a child with diaper dermatitis, the things that you can put on the skin that will be helpful are going to be either a zinc oxide based barrier cream that is fragrance free and dye free, check the description box, I will list some down below, or a petrolatum based ointment like Vaseline or Aquaphor. These function as a external skin barrier. Your child's skin barrier is impaired and, and fragile and damaged with the diaper dermatitis. They need reinforcement through the use of a barrier cream. 
applied to the area. And zinc oxide is fantastic. It's anti-inflammatory and just will help to allow the skin barrier to heal. But Vaseline or petrolatum also works really well. Very safe and effective. Now your child's pediatrician or pediatric dermatologist may prescribe some specific medications in certain situations. They may prescribe an antibiotic if there appears to be some secondary bacterial infection. They may prescribe some specific antifungal creams to address the candida yeast component. Or they may prescribe a, a steroid medication to be used. Um, and all of those things are standard of care treatments prescribed and offered. I would caution you though against self-treating your child's diaper dermatitis with over-the-counter steroid creams, over-the-counter hydrocortisone cream. Uh, if your dermatologist or pedi pediatrician prescribes those, make sure you understand the directions for use, how frequent to use them, and how long to use them for. The reason it's important to only do this under the uh, instruction of your, of your healthcare provider is that there are some risks associated with using over-the-counter topical steroids or topical steroids, thinning of the skin, they can predispose to skin infections, and in your child in particular, they can be absorbed and have some systemic effects when used long-term and when used in that diaper area where the skin is thinner and impaired. So there are some risks. So I caution you against self-treating with an over-the-counter steroid cream. There are some potential risks that can occur, but something that your, your healthcare provider might prescribe and is often, often offered. Allowing your baby to have some diaper-free time as long as you are able to tolerate without them, you know, soiling themselves uh, would be recommended just to allow air to contact the skin to dry it out and to have some diaper free time. The more frequently you change the diapers, the better. And you may have to, for a short term, switch from cloth diapering, if you're using those, to a more absorbent uh, disposable diaper and changing it frequently, which is you know, obviously what you were trying to avoid with the cloth diaper, <laughs> all that waste. But in this situation, it may be something that temporarily you have to switch to. But I wanted to make this video to kind of point out those factors that drive diaper dermatitis so that you can be informed about what actually causes it and you know make some more strategic changes and decisions in your child's skincare and diapering practices that can help and make a huge difference. So I hope this video was helpful to you guys. Uh, if you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.